Hello viewers, Super GT here. Now, on Gran Turismo Sport, before this video, any video you've seen of me playing this game has always been on the controller. But now, I finally got round to using my wheel. So, the wheel I have is the Thrustmaster TX, which is for the, for the Xbox, and I have a converter so I can now use it on the PlayStation. So we're gonna give it a go, and I'm expecting to be slow to begin with well that's kind of proven already by the fact that I've start, I'm starting 15th out of 15 and you can see already into turn 1 going way too deep and getting on the throttle way too early on the exit of turn 2 again on the throttle too early so this is going to be a massive learning experience for me because I'm not too experienced on the wheel on this game of course and well on any game really and not only that I'm now an SS driver, so I'm the top rank, so I'm presumably racing against even better people than I was before. So that makes it doubly difficult. So here we go then, Ram Maggiore, it's the daily, um, it's the daily race, it's daily B race. Uh, so just four laps, eight or nine minutes in total length, and look up the inside of the Mitsubishi Evo. And there we go, this is the thing I was going to talk about here is that the visibility is a lot less of course in the cockpit view so you can I can only really see half of the mirror the rear view mirror that is and if I move the seat really far back then I can't really see out the front window it seems really there's this weird paradox with that so it's quite difficult to see basically uh, that, that's everything so if there's a car next to you it's very hard to see because you have to press a button to look and you know obviously when you look to the side you're not looking to the front so there are difficulties and with chase cam you can kind of just see everything it's a lot easier so there is an advantage in that sense in using chase cam but but with the wheel I think cockpit view for me feels the most comfortable you can of course use the hood cam which also which well which gives you more uh, sort of visibility but as it is here you can see I'm going to get a penalty visibility is at a premium in the cockpit view so of course you have that massive pillar on the left hand side of the screen blocks a fair amount of the view and you can adjust the cockpit view slightly you can move your seat sort of up and down or, or the camera up and down and the camera forwards and backwards but there's not a huge amount of difference between all the settings but you can see here I'm up to 13th and I'm I'm keeping with the group roughly it's, it'd be interesting to see if I could do any better with the controller, but I think in the long term the wheel is the way to go. As I go up, in, uh, go up into 12th and I get a penalty there, uh, up to more than 5 seconds, and to be honest I can't work out what that was for. Uh, if you can tell me then please do. Uh, purple sector, but then again it should be, second lap should always be setting better laps than your first. As we but round turn five up towards the S's. Uh, the Bugatti they're going for an audacious move against the Portuguese and actually doesn't really pull off a nice one at all, just uh, rushes him aside quite brutally. I'm going to look for a way past. Coming into the uh, S's onto the back straight and I, you see this is a very, very silly mistake and I keep my foot in another mistake and I'm making myself look look like a total amateur there. So just getting distracted with looking where the other car was. I did manage to catch back up to this guy and get a good run on him. Uh, just so you know, I'm using the Lexus and it's a group four race. Up the inside, so that's a fairly good move up into 13th. So we're basically fighting to not finish last here and we still have over a lap left to go. So the one advantage, the main advantage I think with the wheel is smoothness. And smoothness is typically rewarded in this game, as it is in many sims. Uh, you, you just need to be very smooth on the steering, spook, smooth, smooth on the throttle, and smooth on the brakes. Uh, those three things, be smooth on them and you'll probably do quite well. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it on the wheel than it is on the controller, at least it is in my opinion. And I believe that most of the really, really quick times are on a wheel. Now, unlike Forza, where it's pretty much all controller, this game, I think, 
very well optimised for the for the uh, for the wheel. That's not to say that the controller isn't, isn't fast, because I think there are definitely a lot of very 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 quick controller users. But back to the race, one lap left to go, or less than a lap left to go, to simply not finish last. That's the main challenge here. I suppose I have gone up two positions from where I started in 15th into turn four. And just hitting the apex just about. So rounding out that corner in 13th still. Now we're coming up towards the massively banked corner. I'm going to go defensive here. The Atenza looking right, then looking left. He's going to take the normal racing line. Presumably to get a better exit on the way out. I'm looking for him. I can't quite see. I guess just about see a glimpse of him as I look behind there. Now that is again another problem with visibility. I can just about see him in the left hand mirror there. So he is behind me. But it is quite hard to tell exactly the location of the cars around you. You do of course have the, in the copy view and the bumper cam, you do have the, there's a little thing on the HUD that kind of indicates, it lights up if someone's very close to you. But that is if they're very close to you. Into the final corner, he's in the mirror. I don't think he's going to be able to go for it here. It's not really an overtaking kind of corner. He might be able to get me on the way out if I mess it up, but I just about got it right. And we're going to come across the line. I set a 2.070 on lap 3. It's going to be a 2.063. So we're getting there in terms of pace. My qualifying lap was a 2.07. So my faster lap there, better. Uh, there we go, though. 13th in our very first wheel race. Not ideal, but we have to start somewhere. And I sort of, get, sort of have to learn the whole game again. Now, this is something very different very quickly. I went to Seattle very recently. You may remember the circuit from the Gran Turismo games. I'm just going to go through what I saw. So this is the very first corner. This is where the first corner is in that Seattle circuit in the old Gran Turismo games. As we're going to just indicate here. So you come around that bend and then you're going to turn to the right. This is where that shot just was. And then you go under this causeway here, which is this shot as you go through that section. So up into turn two, so you turn left underneath, go on to Yesler Way, which is this corner here. I'm standing on the apex of that corner. So you go up there towards the next bend, uh, as shown here. And then you come up to quite an iconic building, although apparently it's not. It's just a car park. That's all it is, that weird triangular building. And that's here, which is just up the road. And then you see to the left, uh, that's where you turn on the track and go up the hill. Uh, the long ascent up the hill with many jumps, of course, we all remember that. Um, I think it's massively exaggerated in the game, but, you know, that's a game. You're allowed, you, can, you have artistic license to go a bit mental. And at the top of the hill, you turn right into Fifth Avenue, I believe it is, which is here. So I'm looking down the hill here from the top of it. And then you turn right here, then go down to Fifth Avenue that way there, which we're just looking at. So that's just a quick look at the first sector. So I went to Seattle, I just thought oh, I'll go and have a look. And yeah, it was quite a cool uh, little experience. This is the worst penalty of the day. Uh, so this Lex is going to go around the outside of me, fair enough. Into the corner, I just grazed the back of him. Doesn't really affect him, he still hits the apex. And well, five second penalty for that. Um, punishment didn't really match the crime, to be honest. Uh, here's takeout of the day, this is quite funny. Uh, so the Audi goes very wide. He's a Spaniard, so you've got to watch out. And coming up the hill, just just going to turn across, just going to turn completely across. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he might not have seen me in cockpit view or something, but he should have perhaps paid more attention. But um, this, his Spanish bro, or my bro, really is, is sticking up for me here because he's just going to come out of nowhere, like John Cena, and just absolutely muller the hell out of me. Look at that, that's that's a proper wipeout. If you're going to wipe something out, do it properly. So my my Spanish friend there. Uh, coming in to help with a with a takeout of the day, brilliant stuff. But we're going to move to the next race. So I'm still an SS driver at this point. I haven't gone down in ranking. You can go down in driver rating, uh, so that is possible. Uh, still, still 15th. I've gone for the Corvette this time around, uh, trying out something different. It's got a very unusual looking steering wheel, but I'm not last on the grid this time. Let's see what we can do. Can I put any of my practice from the previous race into good use uh, for the second of the two races? So starting 15th, plenty of cars up ahead. It's usually this mid 
uh, area on the grid, middle towards the back, where it gets really congested, really crowded very early. Uh, a lot of the top guys, top half of the grid, can kind of pull away as they normally do. And then the middle and the back, you're going to be fighting for scraps back here, get anything you can take and run away with it. So into turn five, the really difficult corner, although not suffering too badly. The Corvette is actually a really good handling car and it's, it's one that I do really like using. The Lexus there seems to be a very popular choice as well now. Um, I've actually begun to use that car too. It does seem to be a very good overall car and it does have really good straight line speed which is a massive bonus. So I'm up a couple of positions, up into 13th. I think a couple of people have left. So always just making the most of other people's misfortunes slash lack of skill they go wide so then running down towards the bank's corner uh, just having to check behind a couple of times it's, it's very easy in chase cam uh, to look to look around you to see where everyone is in this view you do have to check more often just to keep updated on exactly where everyone is gain two positions there two people having a massive accident nearly and then that guy uh, fortunately for me wasn't parked on the apex just got there before him so gained three positions so all the positions I've gained so far not really any legitimate overtakes just just people just slowing down from penalties or contact so into a top 10 and we're going to look to try to maybe get deeper into the top 10 seventh is uh, pulling away already eighth place has gone very uh, deep into the final corner I'm going to try to get onto the back of this little Italian battle for eighth place so the Lexus pulls out, he breaks really early, so I'm going to go around the outside into turn one, and I can't quite see where he is, I'm just going to give a car whip from the inside, but I just about get the job done. Up into ninth, it's a good overtaking move, I, I'm not sure what happened, but obviously it was too good a move, one second penalty, uh, there was contact, I don't know where that contact was, but, but you know, the game's never wrong, so... I'm going to have to deal with it. So then down the hill, down the slight gradient towards turn five, and just spotting that breaking point into the long, dodgy right hand of probably one of the hardest corners to get right on this track. Pretty much always get it wrong. In fact, I don't think I've ever got it 100% right, although you never will really. Into the S's. Now, this is where, this is something I've noticed with the wheel. Uh, the, well, first off, there, massive mistake. Going to lose a lot of momentum and going to get passed by the BMW. But the, the thing I was about to say is, with a with a controller, the steering is a lot faster technically because you can just move the stick very quickly to the left or to the right, and the start the, the car's at a maximum steering angle. Whereas with the wheel, you have to kind of you turn it more progressively, so the the turning can take a little bit longer. So you do have to be you do have to take that into account. Uh, so of course you can just turn a bit quicker but you do have to be very careful so I mean just on the whole basically just adjusting to the wheel it's not easy at all so for those of you wondering uh, what am I using to convert the device because as I said the wheel I'm using Thrustmaster TX 458 Italia which is an Xbox One wheel this is of course a PlayStation game so how do you get it to work I've got a device called the Drive Hub by Collective Minds Cost about 80 pounds and it just basically can, you, you plug your wheel into that and it just basically does some magic and uh, it makes it work so it seems to be absolutely fine I've changed my settings as well I'll make a settings video soon based on my controller settings and the wheel settings I've got a master on the inside he's gone deep uh, actually that's a very good move as he goes up into ninth a uh, guy just dis uh, disappeared teleported away some some uh, strange alien technology there and I've still got how much of a penalty 2.2 seconds to deal with so I think I've been very smooth but uh, clearly not good enough by the game standards 2.29 seconds worth of penalty to deal with by the end so this Italian is going to go ghosted out he's uh, obviously got a penalty as well up into ninth not bad I started 15th up six so far. If you can't finish sixth, then at least gain six places. I suppose that's the nearest equivalent. Into the S's again, very, very late turning into that first apex. That's what I mean about the steering. I need to 
perhaps be a little bit sharper on the way in. Just turn that wheel a bit, a bit quicker. Right, this is going to put me on the back foot now, onto the back straight. Of course, one of the longest straight sections on the track. I'm trying to spot exactly where this guy is. And he's not in my side view mirror there, or side, uh, side window. Into the corner, I'm just kind of hoping that he isn't there. Given half a car whip on the inside... And there we go, so he just appeared behind me again. So a sigh of relief as I didn't clatter him off at the apex of the banked corner. Coming up the hill through the S's. And we are going to look to consolidate ninth. Hopefully those two guys start battling. Eighth place is pulling away. The Spaniard is going to look to try and go on terms with the Croats ahead. But I'm going to be on terms here with a Finn and an Italian. So... So come down uh, down towards the final corner the second last time I've taken it very wide almost actually just grazed two wheels on the grass and I'm going to get deja vu here because we've got someone alongside us heading towards the first corner 2077 lap time not the best he's kind of disappeared I'm trying to judge where he is and I've gone through so I'm not sure what happened to that guy I think there's been a fair few alien abductions in this race people just disappearing and uh, never to be seen again but now I have to kind of defend from a Lexus driven by an Italian behind now I do have about nearly a second over him but you can never really rest on your laurels too early you still have three quarters of a lap left to go you mustn't get uh, too overconfident this early and I've gone very wide that's going to cost me a couple of attempts and this sequence here seems to be my weakest sequence. Can we actually learn from our mistakes? It's going to turn in a little bit more brave on the steering angle that time. And we go through a lot better. And this corner can be taken flat if you extend the uh, mid apex there, if you like, halfway through using the extra tarmac from the other layout. So now the Lexus is right on my tail. He's obviously taking that section a lot better than I have. I'm going to go defensive. And there he is, the nose is just about appearing in the side mirror, or side window. And through the apex, I can see him in the rear view mirror briefly, so he is still behind. Is he going to get a run on us? Yes he is. We're going to go defensive, cover the left hand side, as we go through the left apex. I'm not sure if he's there, actually no, he's in the mirror, it's okay. It's, try it's really hard trying to spot your apex whilst trying to spot exactly where the other car is. It is actually a very difficult skill to kind of learn, and it's not something I'm very used to from playing in chase camp for so many years in so many different games. I've actually got a bit of a gap now over the Lexus. I can see him getting slightly smaller in that rear view mirror. That's a good thing to see as we only have one more corner left to go. We're going to attack it very early. You can see he hit the apex very well. And we come through. We're going to finish in ninth. Not a bad result, although actually we do have that 2.2 second penalty to deal with. So, I mean, I don't think I could have finished ahead of that guy in any way if I had to still serve that penalty. So 10th place it is, not a bad result I suppose. Started 15th, still learning the wheel. The only person in the Corvette as well, so I'm not sure exactly if it's the best car. It used to be very good, perhaps it isn't anymore. But uh, there we go guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know your thoughts, your perhaps your settings as well for the wheel. But yeah, thank you very much for watching as always guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye. Listen.